Um, I'm here today to have some fun and to show you how technology and artificial intelligence can help us to close the gender gap and therefore make the working world a better and fairer place. Um, a current Bitcom study says that one out of four German companies feel threatened in its existence through the digitalization. Fry and Osborne even predict in their famous Oxford study that 59% of our current jobs will not be existing anymore in 2025 or at least have been radically changed. Our occupations blur and if we think of the innovations and developments of the last decade, you can be sure we are living in a world of volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity. We fight in a war of talents that consists of about 2 million missing professionals only on the German-speaking job market. And the evolution of our professional requirements and personal leads even has led us to a new work movement. Artificial intelligence has long since arrived in fields as medicine with cancer detection or civil engineering with additive manufacturing. Um, but we still understand human resources as we did 20 years ago. I think in a globalized and digitalized world, it is not enough um, to only understand human resources as a command and control structure and comparing CVs to a respective job description. So it is time to rethink um, our understanding of human resources and to redefine our faith that regarding artificial intelligence. Um, does any one of you know what happens on the 18th of March in 2019? The 18th of March in 2019 is the so-called equal pay day. Until this day in the next year, women with equal professional skills than their male opponents statistically work without any salary. That means um, still with the same professional skills, statistically you earn 21% less only because you're a woman. In this context, it is not very surprising that only 24% of the German leadership positions are occupied by female leaders. But hands down, there are also further social demographic groups that face significant disadvantages. If you have, for example, a non-Christian confession and are applying for a job, your chances decrease for about 10% only because of your confession. In comparison to a German, if you have a migration background from countries in Northern Africa or, for example, Albania or Turkey, your chances to even get a reply significantly decrease. In this context, it is just enough if only your name sounds not typically German to decrease your chance for 7%. And in this context, if I ask you now how many of the current 197 German DAX board members are officially outed homosexual, what would you think? True, not a single one. So if you want to be successful on the German-speaking job market, you statistically be better a white, Christian, German, heterosexual man. So what are the reasons for these concerning facts and figures? We all are victim of our biases and cognitive illusions. The first one that is quite interesting is the so-called blind spot bias. The blind spot, swap, blind spot bias says um, that we all contribute ourselves the property of not being affected by biases and cognitive illusions. You will see afterwards that our decision making is of course influenced. Um, the first bias is the so-called intentional causality, better known as the halo effect. The halo effect means that we connect certain personality aspects um, with different characteristics. So we conclude the first impression of our counterpart with the overall impressions. That means, in easier words, if we consider someone as being attractive, we will also consider him as being competent. Further, we all are victim to effective heuristics. We all try to avoid risks, yes. But the evaluation of these individual risks is subject to our emotions. If we face positive conditions or certain circumstances, the value predomin is predominate. If we have the fear or other negative emotions, the risks are bigger. So if you transfer this situation in your business life, and you have an antipathy or the fear to talk to your boss, you won't take the risk of presenting him an applicant that is outside of the prevailing expectations regarding applicants in your company. Further also, the company culture has a huge impact on our decision making. Um, the effect is called the bandwagon effect, and it means um, we do or believe things 
just because other people in our organization do or believe exactly the same. That means if you're not working for a company that supports diversity, then you won't statistically need it. And if you think again of the rate that are, or the, the positions that are occupied by female managers in Germany, then you can see how many of us sit in the bandwagon. And of course, there are still a lot of other biases, for example, gender biases. If you think of a craftsman, as the name already told you, it's a man. If you think of a stewardess, most of us will have a picture in their mind from a woman. And if you try typing in, in this context, CEO into Google's picture search, you will see that the stereotype of a CEO is still the gray white man. Um, so, therefore, you can see our decision making is still influenced by a lot of different biases and a lot of different stereotypes. Um, so, how can we clean up the situation? First thing, the digitalization has changed the way we live together. Um, we find our partners on dating apps, we are searching for our dream jobs on social media, and we communicate over messenger services with our beloved ones. And these services seem so important to us that 53% of the Generation Z members would rather lose their sense of smell than their smartphone. Worldwide are more people existing that are using a mobile device than a toothbrush. So you could say Abraham Maslow's famous pyramid of needs has two new elements on his fundament, battery and Wi-Fi. So the amount of data we produce grows exponentially. But unfortunately, there is the biggest lie of our times. I have read and accept the terms and conditions. Um, a quite remarkable example that shows our naivety with this topic comes from a Finnish IT security company. Um, the company set up an internet hotspot in one of London's most busiest areas. And as we know now, Abraham Maslow's pyramid of needs has two new elements on his fundament. So people were searching for the Wi-Fi, but there was a clue. The first sentence of their terms of conditions was like, with the usage of the service, you agree to hand over your firstborn. If you do not have a firstborn, we take your pet. These conditions apply for eternity. It took them about 30 minutes to recruit 250 users. So what do we learn from this? We cluelessly use public Wi-Fi or download apps that grant access to our personal and private data. And in addition, there are a lot of sources we provide publicly available further data. We share our CVs and skills on professional networks as LinkedIn. We communicate our current life situation on social media and so on. And if it is still not enough permissiveness with our data, there is still the magical question in the supermarket, do you have your payback card with you? So, um, so far so good. But how can data and artificial intelligence now help us to close the gender gap? The amount of data we produce grows. And an artificial intelligence can easily analyze these data for different aspects. For example, the mental willingness of a person to adapt change, the management style or the individual cultural fit from a person to a company or, or organization. Um, but how is it possible? that an artificial intelligence analyzes our cultural traits or our personality. Um, without a doubt, the way we speak and the way we write are the windows to our soul. That means um, the best way or a good solution um, to valid psychometrics is to analyze our speech and text. And what sounds like rocket science at the first glance becomes plausible if we take a deeper look, what messengers are hidden in our language. Um, just let me give you two examples. The first, um, two management executives that talk about their achievements in the last year. The first one says, my achievements for this company are extraordinary. I am the true leader of this organization. And the second one says, what we have achieved as a team is outstanding. Together, we can do everything. You can see with these 12 to 15 words, that you have two really different leaders here. The first one uses I messengers, first person singular. The second one uses we messengers and has the team in focus. 
The second example um, focuses on an individual, individual's motivation. So imagine the first person says, I love my job at company A because I can help people to live a better life. Very emotional words as love, as enable. And on the other hand, you have a person that says, I prefer my job at company B because it provides me financial security. The word security or prefer are by far more factor than love or enabling. So also with these short sentences, you will see that you have two completely different persons in front of you. And of course, an AI can analyze quite more data touch points in our language and can analyze quite a lot different hidden messages. For example, are you speaking passive or active? Are things good or just not bad? Do you prefer long and complex sentences over the short ones? And so on. Um, these hidden messages are analyzed in the blink of an eye. But of course, um, artificial intelligence, especially in the field of people analytics or psychometrics, can be discussed very emotionally. Um, but let us take a look out of the bird's eye view. Without deep diving in the technological side of artificial intelligence, an artificial intelligence has to be trained with a certain training data set to fulfill a certain purpose. What makes it quite comparable to a tool? For instance, a regular hammer, such a hammer that every one of us has in their repair case. And if you now imagine I give three of you a hammer, then you could do a lot of different things with it. You in the first row, you look like a very talented craftsman. You take the hammer, yes, you, but very talented craftsman. You hit the nail in the wall, great. And you, you look very creative. I think you are. So you build a statue of your neighbor. Quite amazing. And then the third one gets the hammer and he hits her on the head. So every one of you has the same tool, but the question is, do we make a clue out of it or do we use it from another perspective? Um, in a nutshell, that means how can we implement an artificial intelligence for a meaningful human resource management? First of all, we have the fundament. The data we are produ producing grows exponentially. Second thing is, in comparison to the human decision making, an artificial intelligence, if not trained that way, stands not under the influence of cognitive biases or illusions. And the third thing is, an artificial intelligence is not interested in sensitive or biometric data such as religion, sexuality, skin, ca skin color or something else. And we do not need all these data to analyze the individual match between a person and an organization. So therefore, artificial intelligence can help us to make our decisions fairer and free of unfair disadvantages. And if we learn to cooperate and work together with meaningful technology, such as artificial intelligence, and stop being afraid of innovations or progress in general, then artificial intelligence will not only help us to close the gender gap, it will help us to celebrate diversity. Thanks.